I've redone my sliders guys 10 minutes legendary we're using game speed normal okay so we're, we're doing a redo I'm sorry about the last set if I could remove it I would um, I think it's gonna get people to come to this set this is where I'm going I'm going to sprint speed at 5 I'm going with acceleration at 48 shot error 51 pass error 56 shot speed 51 pass speed 45 let's go through each of those on this first setup sprint speed at 5 you guys remember when I had one uh, one and one sprint speed remember how that worked out that was actually really nice some people really liked it I enjoyed it myself um, I was just trying to go 48 48 at the time um, recently because I thought you know maybe that's gonna get a little bit more fouls maybe it's gonna get a little bit better coverage and everything else but I did not like that I could not blow past defenders with really fast players it just didn't make sense it's it's the catch-up bug we don't want that that's no good so acceleration 48 to make up for that okay this makes your players heavier makes agility a little bit tougher and this is good because now it separates those players that are exceptional in their agility and their ability um, that's great agility ability you get it but no that's great because that allows them to stand out and FIFA as it is especially on normal speed is herky-jerky so this also tones that down makes it less look like it's just chaotic and frantic and and just you know a bunch of animations that's just not realistic um, next is going to be shot air shot air is really important because that allows those really just bad shots but also some good shots as well and this allows there to be a little bit more random play um, you know random shot taking but at least they're going to take that shot and they're going to take it in obvious positions if you have it at 50 or even below that you're going to see them really be picky of how they're going to shoot because the computer does not want to miss you know so they want to make sure there's a wide open opportunity to take this shot and that's why you see a lot of those non-obvious positions to shoot you know or obvious position to shoot and the, the computer decides not to shoot so this allows it but there are a lot more other things that will factor into that next is pass error pass error of 56 I'm so sorry you guys bought 70 I don't know if anybody really used this ad I have I don't know 200 views or whatever um, but honestly guys it, that was a mistake and I'll tell you why it was a mistake because 70 was nice in 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 the sense of you know making a lot of errors you know sending up high balls that aren't going to be you know perfectly placed but it also hurts the physics of the game okay meaning the ball does not stay on the ground it goes you know bop -ba -da -ba, you know I don't know how to make the animation effect or the sound effect but it, it's a beach volleyball you think about a volleyball uh, or no, no, beach ball, a beach ball, not a volleyball, a beach ball, right? It's up and down, up and down, has almost no weight to it. Um, and pass error is one of those that if you mess with it too much, you lose the weight of the ball. And then you see, you know, top players who can't even hit the ball on the ground. You know, I know there's some of you guys out there, college players, high school players, professional. You know when you hit a good pass, it's crisp, it's on the ground, and it's got some pace on it. So that's important with pass error. And plus, I'd love to see the computer try to send those balls up, um, you know, from, from the back, and they'll just hit it up because they've got nowhere to pass to. You know, and pass error, they make the mistake as well. And that's why, you know, that's because of the pass speed as well, which allows the players to regroup. Versus if I had it at a very high level, the players wouldn't get to the ball in time, then they'd have 90% to 95% you know, pass accuracy, which is definitely not accurate. And I don't think Barcelona is even that high. So um, next on the list is shot speed. Shot speed, you guys know how much I love shot speed at 51, because 51 is, is kind of that magic number to get the keepers to, to have those different save animations and that slight defect deflection. So if you see my Fleetwood Town uh, career mode, I'll include it here. All right here, click on that link and you'll be able to see the playlist that is my uh, excellent Fleetwood Town experience. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But definitely check that out. Um, but what that allows it to do is those shots to be hard enough where they're not being just saved and going right back to an attacker going right back to you know back into the into the play if somebody's gonna hit as hard as they do then that ball needs to go out for a corner you know or out for a throw in or something like that and that'll be in rel relation to um, the goalkeeper so shot speed 
Um, oh, I already covered that. <laughs> pass speed. Sorry, guys, it's late. I gotta wake up here early. So pass speed 45. We like. I like this 45. It allows players to catch up to the pace of play. Doesn't make it crazy. Um, not a big difference, you know, in terms of the sense that you know it. it you're going to still be able to pass using the pass button, not the through pass button. I was finding that I was actually using the through pass button more often than anything to make my make those tough passes and or make those really direct passes that were really to feet because they were a little bit more pacey. But, you know, this brings that back and it allows the user to go back that are manual players to go back and, and, and enjoy it. And I'll be honest, I really haven't thought about you um, automatic um, players. I, I don't consider myself ever to to use automatic um, passing or anything like that. So, um, you know, if you have problems with that, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. But I don't think it's a big deal. So we skipped through injuries. I really should explore that a little bit more. I think that would be really fun to get into a bit more. But um, it's all about gameplay right now. And the next set here, we've got goalkeeper ability, 48. Marking, 70. Frequency of the run, run frequency, 48. Line height, 53. Line length, 65. And then line width at 100. So let's go to goalkeeper ability, 48. Like I mentioned in regards to that shot speed, you want these slight deflections. Enough said. You guys have heard me preach on about that. Marking. We're going to come back to marking. Let's go down to these four right here. Run frequency, 48. This is important because line height's 53. If I had it at 50, I would either always A, the computer would always be offside because they love to play that through ball up in the air, that lopped ball, that I actually am seeing a lot of that in the World Cup right now. Um, so it's not a bad thing, but at the same time, this allows them to still be able to, um, you know, to find the player or get close to them, but also have a defender right there as well, um, because the line height's spot on with it. So, and line height's at 53 only because line length is at 65. I know 65 seems high, but here's what I've found is that with 65, your players are going to be closer to the attacker and the computer is going to be closer to the attacker and they're going to be just tighter, you know, and I was trying to do that with that with that uh, a lot of words there. I was trying to do that setup when I was having line width at 20. Line with that 20 kept it all really nice and tight, but the problem with that is I could just go down the flanks back and forth, back and forth. Here, it's different because now everybody's covered, and it's a realistic way. You know, they're covered and they're tracking back. And it's just a really nice thing to see, and you'll see that here as soon as I get done. I'll be jumping into a quick game. This is live commentary, by the way. So, um, but let's go back to marking at 70. Marking at 70 has to be kind of the go-to with this line setup. If you don't have marking at 70 um, or even higher, I found that 70 is perfect because it allows them to still follow who they're who they're marking, but also not worrying about other players around them so much um, to the point where you know they're completely disregarding the person with the ball. Um, so there's a lot of cool um, games that way that I've seen where you know the defenders are, are are marking a zone but they're also you know gonna go for the ball um, and then have other players around them mark whoever's around them as well so this is a nice setup and then of course that coverage throughout the field like I've always been saying you can't play the ball to an attacker have them turn on the dime and just take on the defense this allows them to play more post up related you know it's an NBA or basketball term or whatever but it's the same way you know their back should be facing goal most of the time if you're all the way up at the top you know so this allows that to happen um, the last setup here full back positioning at 90 power bar user doesn't really matter first touch control same thing but full back positioning is key because let's the side backs and the, also the, the center backs go up and join in on the attack 
and not only the attack but they're also there for the recovery because line length is at 65 so when you switch to somebody you're not just gonna have everybody all in a straight line you know waiting for the attack to happen you're gonna have them kind of sporadic like one might be staggered up you know and another one might be covering behind him and vice versa so this is a beautiful setup and so let's jump into a quick game but I want you guys to pay attention and just the, the way the line length looks um, in how the defense is covering. And there's that pass error again. But see, right away, they were already there. They're joining in on the attack already. And you can see at the, um, the graph at the bottom of what the line length looks like. And here he is. Look, he's following him into the oppos opposition's half. Okay? This is really key. Actually, I'm going to go in a replay and look at it. So check this out. Yeah, let's go. I gotta switch to the right guy. Okay, watch right here. Okay, Peralta, he did really good the other day. So watch this. So here he is coming, and who's there with him? The left back. Okay, you don't have that on default. They don't go to him that quick. But see, he he realizes. Okay, I've got somebody marking him with me. I'm gonna step back a bit now. Let's see how that, that's just a nice, that's what I'm talking about. If more of that happens, you're going to see everything come together. And that wasn't happening on the previous set, so. And see, things are still really tight. And see, they on Legendary, they're going to play that, that long ball all day long. That's fine. No big deal. Um, I can defend that just fine. But um, they will catch me on it, and I know they will, so. But look at the, the marking overall. The line settings are really coming into play here. And see the physicalities there too with the with the 5-5. Five five. And so the line width at 100 as well. I really, you guys know I've been a big fan. And look at that. See, it was behind Dos Santos and the, the defender just stepped up a little quick um, and got the ball. So, and there's that lob doll. We're not a fan of that. I know. But don't worry, they don't do it every single time. So um, I'd much rather that happen because eventually the good thing about the computer is that they do learn from their mistakes and they learn of what doesn't work and what does. And so, um, like, I always like to attack down the sides. That's why 20 was so easy for me. But see, now look at that line with that 100. You don't get that anymore. But what I really love is just that we're all there in the right position. See, he can still kind of turn, kind of go to the side, but I'm still there. And then I've overcommitted. And that's a good pass. And what a crappy shot that was. So, I hate to end on a crappy shot, guys, but this is a longer video than I intended. I hope you guys understand what I'm doing. Oh, actually, I defend. I blocked that. Okay. Well, let's see the corner just for fun. Let's see how we defend this corner. All right. Well done. Oh, look at that shot. Whoa. Okay. That was cool. So see, that's that shot error again, and the line height and everything come together. Those kind of fun one-time shots. That was a lot of fun. So anyway, guys, I want you to to take away that I'm never going to settle with with mediocrity. I'm never going to settle with, you know, if there's something I see that's not right, I'm going to obsess over it and change it. That's why I'm obsessed with getting things right. That's why they, I, I put hashtag SimSnob. It's not a marketing thing. I'm not making money or anything like this. I, I just really, really, really want to be the guy who, when you think about realism and in simulation, you think about Matt 10. Okay? Because that's my that's my approach to everything. You know, I'm we're still tweaking NCAA football 14 right now in the other videos you've seen. It's been that game's been out for a year, and this game's just about a year as well. So I'm still tweaking. Um, I'm at the point now where things are really starting to come together, and I think this slider set really sets it up. I'm not going to say it's final, but I am going to say it's very close to it, and I'm very happy with the results. I hope you are too. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, and in other words, you know, post something so I can read. It's <laughs> not that I'm talking to myself. I can't wait to, to read from you guys. Um, take care and stay tuned.